my name is Jared. I'm one of the lead founding pastors here at this church. And if you're here in person, packed in here or in any of our additional seating, we're so, so, so glad that you're here. If you're with us online, this is a special time. We're so, so glad. We have people literally all over the world that are part of this church by gathering together online. So we are so glad that you are here to witness what we're here to witness today. It's a special day for our church because we not only get to witness, but some of us actually are going to participate in a response to Jesus. You get to experience uh, people responding to Jesus in real time. And how and when you respond to Jesus really does matter. It's a big part of this faith journey. And I, I got to experience someone else's response this week that I was not expecting. I was uh, actually, uh, this is going to feel like a random little left turn here, but I was at the dentist this last week for the second time in one week. I'm not going to give you the backstory, but it's just not great. And so I was there, and I was in the chair, got the weird glasses on and all the thing, and I, so I was pulling out my phone because I wanted to listen to a book because I didn't want to hear what they had to do in my mouth. And so as I open my phone, I pull my phone up, behind me, I hear my dentist say, oh, good God, that's out of control. And that's not words you want to hear from a dentist, especially in that vulnerable position. Yeah, that's why you don't hear from your doctor or your tax person. These are not words you want to hear. And so I, I didn't know, I was like, what, 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 what? He goes, the number of unanswered calls on your phone. That's out of control. Now look, I don't think our insurance covers that amount of sass for my dentist. I'm not sure why he thought he could comment. I'm not saying he's wrong, it is out of control. But I just thought that was interesting that he had to respond to that in that moment. And the reality is, I'm thankful he didn't see my text message number. The reality is, if you're not in my contacts, I ain't answering. And years ago, God gave me, I got a download from God, a word of wisdom of turn off your voicemail. And so if you call, try and get a hold of me, you can't. If you know me, text me. That's how we're going to find each other. And so I, because we live in a world right now, at least it was for me, where, where there's just too many places that I have to respond to too many people. I got people coming at me from every different channel and all kinds of different ways. And, and I know that for some of us, we're better at responding to others and through other formats maybe than others. But I think for lots of us, we have places where we just, don't, we just don't give a response if someone tries to reach us. So I thought it'd be fun to see what is the best, if I wanted to get a hold of you, what is the best way for me to get a response from you? So what I'm going to have you do is if when I give an example, like I say, like, is email the best one for you? If email is the best way for us to get a hold of you, I want you to clap for it, okay? So I'm going to give you a couple examples because I want you to really, 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 really consider what's the best way for us to get a hold of you. So here we go. If I wanted to get a hold of you, how would I get a response? Would it be through email? Wow, that's it? Okay. I thought one person. This changes our whole communication strategy. Holy cow. All right. So, okay. So it's not that. All right. Uh, if I wanted to get a hold of you, how would I get you to respond? Would it be through a text? Oh, okay. Okay. What about a snap or a DM? Four, oh boy. Okay. All right. FaceTime? What if I FaceTimed you? Is that? Okay, a little bit more. Okay. What about an actual phone call? I called you. Whoa, this is shocking. This is not, you are nothing like the previous service. That is shocking to me. And what about if I were to actually handwrite you a letter, put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, take it to the post office, and send it to you? A letter. No, you are lying. There's no way. I need to see the receipts on that. There's no way you're writing letters to people. All right, so I think we'd say text message probably with a phone call, make it a strong second. I was very impressed by that. Lots of different ways that we respond to people. And the same is true of how we respond to God. I think we have different ways that we respond to God. And sometimes we are better at responding to God than others. Sometimes I bet there are in your life where you've gotten maybe one of those promptings from God or a little invitation from God or a little nudge from God and you said yes you responded. And those are big, important moments. No matter how small the nudge may be, it may be like, hey, reach out to this person or, hey, make sure that you invite so-and-so to this. That's a little prompting, a nudge. And you say yes. But there are other times, lots of times, I think if we were to be honest, where maybe it feels or seems like we are ghosting God, where we're just leaving him unread, unopened, and he gives us a prompt, he gives us a nudge, he gives us an invitation, and we just don't do it. And so the question I want us to consider just for the next few moments as we head into baptism is, what might you actually miss from God if you're withholding your yes to God? Just think about that for a second. Like, all of us do that. We get little nudges. We go, oh, I don't know that I want to do that. But what might you be missing 
from God while you are withholding your yes to God. What might that delayed response, maybe best case scenario, delayed response to God actually be costing you? Or have you figured out maybe what is it in your life that actually gets a yes when God doesn't? And what if God's best for you? What if God's very best for you was literally right on the other side of your yes to him? That's what we're gonna look at today as we all consider our own response to God this morning. And we're gonna do it through looking at one of my favorite baptism stories. I've taught this before here, but it's been a while, so I'm excited to dive back into it. It's found in Acts chapter eight, so if you have a Bible with you, you can do that. If you're in this room uh, physically, look uh, right under your chair or on your armrest. There should be a Soul City Bible. You can turn to page 890. 890 will get you there fast. If you're with us online, you can open up your app or you can open up a tab. We want you to get to Acts chapter eight, page 890. This is an amazing story about responding to God in real time. Let me give you some quick context as we go to Acts chapter eight. This is not long after the death and the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus into heaven. The church had just begun and there was a young leader in the church named Philip who was telling everyone he could about the transforming love of Jesus. So our story really starts with Philip. It says this in Acts eight verse 26. Now it says an angel of the Lord actually appeared to Philip and said, go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now, I love this. Here we go. P, or Philip is actually receiving an invitation from God in that moment. He has to choose how he's going to respond. And I would just say to you, a good rule of thumb is, when an angel shows up in your office and tells you to do something, you should probably what? Do it. You should probably do that. So when that happens this week, now you know exactly what to do. We don't know what his plans were, but we just know that he got an invitation and we see in verse 27, he responded immediately. It says in verse 27 that right away, he just started out and went on his way. And as he was going, he met a man. He met this Ethiopian leader and this Ethiopian leader was actually far from home. We know that because he's from Ethiopia and he's just outside of Jerusalem. He's actually a big deal. He is an Ethiopian eunuch who's actually the, in charge of the treasury of the queen of the Ethiopians. So he'd gone to Jerusalem to actually worship. Now, so we know a couple things. He's far from home. He's a person of significance. We know that he's a eunuch, which, well, John will explain that to you later. So we're not gonna even <laughs> dive into those details. But he's there, and what we see is that he kind of is on this same road that God had told Philip to actually go on. And so he shows up to this person, and here we go again. Philip must be wondering, is this, is this why you sent me here, God, to, to make small talk with this tourist? I don't know. Verse 29 gets another prompt. So the Spirit actually says to Philip, yep, go to that chariot and stay near it. And I love it. It's another invitation. It's another opportunity where the Spirit's like, look, just, just go over there and just be like a low-key stalker for a moment, and I'll, I'll just don't make it weird. Like, be close to him, but not so close to him. You know what I mean? Like, be around, but not up in his business. Just don't make it weird, Philip. Then we see what happens in the very next verse. Philip makes it very weird, because it says that he actually ran to the chariot, heard the man reading the Isaiah the prophet, and he asked him, do you understand what this means? So he runs up on this dude. You have to imagine... This Ethiopian leader doesn't know who Philip is. Philip runs up to his chariot and he begins asking him, do you understand what it is that you are reading? And the guy says, no, how can I? How can I possibly understand what I'm reading? I, I don't, I don't, I, if I don't know sort of what the story is all about, how will I know? So Philip began to explain to him, got up in his chariot and began to explain to him all about what Isaiah was talking about. How hundreds and hundreds of years earlier, this prophet Isaiah had talked all about the coming of Jesus and his death and his resurrection and how he was actually the center of everything. And after explaining this passage to this Ethiopian leader, the story takes a really fun turn. Verse 38, it says, as they traveled along on the road, they came to some water and this Ethiopian leader said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me, what? Of me getting what can stop me from getting baptized right now? And so he gave orders right there to stop the chariot. And he and Philip got out of the chariot and he went down and he baptized him right there in the water. You gotta love this story because we see a couple different responses to God, a couple different invitations. We don't know how much this Ethiopian leader already knew about Jesus before he met Philip, but what we do know is that he heard enough to know that Jesus was his way. And immediately, the first little bit of water he sees, he goes, that's enough. Let's, right there. Let's do the thing. Let's get, I want to get baptized right here, right now. 
Didn't have to think about it for another week. Didn't have to mull it over. Didn't need the keyboard player to come up and quietly play behind him while he thought about it. He was just like, I'm in. I'm all in. My yes. I say yes to this invitation of Jesus. Because he knew that Jesus, what Jesus had done and who Jesus was, was enough for him. It was enough for, it, for everyone. I guess my question to you then, wherever you're at in your spiritual journey, I guess what I would ask you is, what else do you need to know to know that Jesus is what you need? Like what, wherever you've been kind of a little reluctant or maybe you've been like, I don't know, I'm not so sure and, you know, kind of toeing the line, that's awesome. This is the conversations we have every week in Alpha. I would just ask you now, right now, today, what else is it that you actually really need to know? To know that Jesus actually is all that you need. He is the yes to your soul's deepest question. He is the yes that actually is from God for you. And there's nothing, honestly nothing, standing in the way of your yes to him today. Imagine for a moment, if Philip hadn't said that first yes, you know when the angel showed up in his office, imagine if he hadn't said that yes. I don't think we'd have this story. If he'd been too busy or too preoccupied. What's so powerful is not only did Philip's yes be significant and meaningful to him, it led to someone else's yes. And sometimes it's true that not only is God's best on the other side of your yes, but someone else's yes is on the other side of your yes. That's why we celebrate baptism the way we do, because we want you to see someone else saying yes to Jesus so that you might say the same. That's why we do it. That's why all these folks are here today, to get baptized, and we don't want anyone to miss this moment. What I love about this, this story, what we see in Philip's response and what we see in the Ethiopian leader's response is this simply this. And, I, and if you've kind of got questions you're wondering about God, I want you to know this core truth about who God is and what God wants from you. All God wants from you, all God wants from you is your yes, nothing less. I don't know if I have anything else wiser in this world to say than just give God your yes. Whatever the circumstance, whatever the situation, whatever the prompting, whatever the invitation, all God wants from you is your yes and nothing less. God just wants you to say yes to him. He's not gonna force you. He's not gonna make you. But he longs for you to say yes to his gift of salvation. Yes to the invitation to your own transformation. God wants your yes, nothing more and nothing less. And I just wonder what it might look for you as we consider our own responses to God. What it would look like for you today to just say yes to what it is that God's inviting you to do, whatever it may be, even if it's saying yes to him today, maybe it's even saying yes to baptism today. And rather than me continue to talk about that, I thought what would actually be really fun is for you to hear a story of someone who said yes to Jesus from our own church and our own community. So I'm gonna invite Aiden to come on up right now and share his story with you. Can we welcome Aiden up to the stage? And I know this story, I love this story, so I want you to listen for yourself and listen for his yeses to God in this story. Aiden, why don't you tell us your story? First of all, good morning, everyone. Morning. My name is Aiden Jimenez, in case we haven't met before. Um, and standing in front of you today feels like a miracle. I was born and raised in Chicago, but a part of my heart will always belong to Costa Rica, where my family's from. Growing up between these places, it taught me about family, faith, and love in ways that shape me for life. And I've always carried that foundation with me. Every Sunday growing up, I went with my family to a church in Winneka, and I remember the familiar faces, the warmth, and the beauty of that space. But while that church gave me my first sense of God, it wasn't completely my own. It was more like where my family had found their faith. I went because it was where I was supposed to be. I believed in God. I prayed and I felt close to him, but it felt like I had, it was like a belief that I had inherited rather than something more deep and personal. Before finding Soul City, I went through one of the darkest times of my life and I can't even look at my mom for this one. <laughs> um, a time that tested me in unimaginable ways. 2019, I was riding my bike to church to go worship with my mom and I was hit by a car. And that impact changed everything. I woke up in a trauma room 
surrounded by machines and excruciating pains and uncertainties. Breathing alone was a struggle. And the doctors warned me my injuries were severe and there were nights where we didn't even know if I'd make it or nights I'd question where I was even walking again. I spent what felt like an eternity locked in the hospital. And the family and friends were there, but there were moments where I had felt completely alone and lost. Each hour was a battle, and I would pray, but my faith felt distant. I questioned why God was allowing this, feeling scared, angry, and broken, as if I was falling away from the God I thought that I had known. Eventually, I was released and able to leave and go home. But that journey was far from over. My spine, amongst other things, was badly damaged, and I spent months in a wheelchair, unable to walk, and uncertain if I was walking again. I felt stripped of my independence, my confidence, and even my faith. Yet somehow, in all that darkness, God was there. My body slowly started to heal, and I began setting goals that I never dreamed of before. And since that accident, I have run three Chicago marathons. Let's go! Not only that, but I am registered to run Chicago next year, New York next year, and Los Angeles. Let's go! Every race, every time I stepped foot on that starting line was already a victory. Yeah, that's good. A, a reminder of how far God had brought me and how much he had restored. Then, I had met my good friends, Andrea Watson and Elmer, who had invited me to Soul City. From that moment I walked through these doors, something inside me had shifted. This wasn't just a church. It was a place where I could truly feel the spirit, where lives were transformed. God stopped feeling like an idea and became a living presence and someone who knew me deeply. And this is where I had finally met my God. Yeah. At Soul City, I learned that I'm not just defined by what happened to me. Not my accident, not anything. That my story didn't end with that accident or my struggles. Instead, it was just the beginning. And God had a bigger plan for me than I had ever imagined. Here, I found a community that welcomed me like family and walked with me and helped me heal. Since finding my, here, my home here at Soul City, I've also had the chance to give back. I'm now on the photography team, capturing moments of worship and joy. It's a, and it's truly a blessing to contribute to the community that has become my family. I wanted to take a moment to thank Pastor John and Richard for being such incredible mentors and you know, guiding me along the way. Your guidance and encouragement have truly strengthened my faith and inspired me to pursue this journey even more with more passion and more purpose. So thank you both for every step of the way. Yeah, give him a round of applause. <laughs> give it up. I also wanted to thank uh, Andrea and Elmer. Without you, I wouldn't have found this amazing place. So thank you for being such incredible friends and mentors and leading me to a community that has transformed my life. And I'm eternally grateful for you guys. So today I stand before you ready to be baptized. This moment isn't just about water or ritual. It's, it's a declaration that I'm ready to give God everything. I'm ready to live the life he's called me to, to let go of the past and to walk forward in faith. I'm choosing to give God 100% because I am no longer defined by my pain and my struggles, but by his love, his grace, and his purpose for my life. Amen. I'm here today ready to begin a new chapter with God not just as a believer, but as someone fully surrendered. So thank you all for being here, for being part of this journey with me, and for showing me that faith isn't just about surviving, but it's also about thriving. Yes. It's about living with purpose, courage, and love. So thank you, Soul City, for being my family and my community. And thank you, God, for leading me here, for guiding me through the darkness into light. And I am ready to follow you fully and wholeheartedly. Thank you. We thank Aiden for his story. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that beautiful? So, what an amazing story and well told. And look, there's, there's water. 
what's stopping us from getting baptized right now? Let's do it. So we're going to do it. So we're going to baptize Aiden right now. This is so fun. And just so you know, he knows this. This is not, I didn't just surprise him with this. He knows we actually planned this. So you go ahead and grab a seat for a minute. And we're going to invite Aiden into the water and those who are part of his friends and family to come up to the tank right now to support him. Take a little step there and then walk down to the end and have a seat. Yeah, it is warm. Surprisingly warm. You guys can come on up and around the tank. And I do thank you. And it's, it's no small thing to get up and tell your story. And God's faithfulness to you is all over your story and, and your faithfulness to keep going, to not give up, and to show up with your whole self to God. And we're so proud of you. And we're in your corner every step of the way. And is it, is it true, Aiden, for you today that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is your Father who loves you unconditionally? Yes. And that Jesus is your Savior who's given you new life? Yes. And that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you to guide and guard you every day of your life? Yes. Then it's my privilege, Aiden, I want you to look out all these people who love and support you. Let's go. It's my privilege as one of your pastors and, and one of your biggest fans to baptize you in the name of the Father who loves you in the name of his son who died for you Hallelujah. and the spirit who lives inside of you. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. All right, who's next? Who wants to go? Let's go. I love, I appreciate Aiden's courage and, and willingness to not only share his story, but to share his yes to baptism right here in front of each and every one of us. And I do actually mean that. This is our turn. This is your turn. It's your opportunity to respond to Jesus however you need to, whatever that looks like right here, right now in that moment for all of who he is and all that he has done for you. And maybe you showed up here today and when it comes to saying yes to Jesus, when it comes to kind of saying that, that yes to that next step of baptism, maybe you showed up here today, like, like Aiden, and you said, I'm ready. Like, I'm ready. And, and Aiden showed up here ready to go today. Maybe you registered to get baptized. Maybe you just know in your heart, no doubt, like, this is for me. I'm here. I think that everyone here came here for me today. I'm ready. Maybe just like that Ethiopian leader, you know, like, there's water. What's stopping me from getting baptized today? Maybe that's you. Or maybe as you kind of check in with your heart right now, you would say, I'm receptive. I don't know if I'm all the way there, but I'm receptive. I'm, I'm, I'm open. Maybe this was a, wasn't what you were thinking. Maybe this wasn't what you were planning when you got up this morning. But, but you sense even now in this moment that there's an openness in your heart to saying yes to God. Maybe that's where you're at. You feel you, you're receptive right now in this moment. Or maybe if you were to be honest, you'd say, I'm feeling a little reluctant right now in this moment. I'm just not sure, you know? I don't, I don't, I'm not, don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if God even wants me. I'm not, I've got all these questions. I feel like I need to know a little bit more. Maybe you're thinking, I didn't like, I certainly did not come to church today in swimwear. Like, I'm not exactly <laughs> sure how that's gonna work. I don't, I wanna get some things. There's some things in my life. Maybe you're thinking there's some things in my life that I need to get kind of in order first or put together first so that God would accept me. I want to send out a calendar invite so all my friends can be there. Like, there's lots of reasons to be a little reluctant in this moment. I totally get that. I, I want to just explain what this is so that at least you know what we're up to in this moment. When we do baptism like this, all it is is an outward declaration of inward transformation. The way we say it around here is baptism is what transformation looks like in public. It's a public way of saying, yes, I have said yes, or I'm saying yes to Jesus right here, right now, in this moment. So it's about everyone else's experience. It's one of those things you just really don't do on your own. You do it in the context of community. And maybe for you, you're thinking, I, I think I, my parents did this when I was a baby, like I was baptized as an infant, and I don't know what this means to that. And I would just say to you, that's a beautiful thing that your parents did. You had no voice or control over it. They just did it for you. And what they were demonstrating was their intention for you to say yes to Jesus one day. And so getting baptized today doesn't cancel out your infant baptism. It's not a cancellation. It's actually a completion. It's you being able to say what that prayer was that you had for me before I could even talk. I'm using my words right now to say yes to Jesus. So it's not a cancellation. It's a completion. 
And I want to be really, really, really clear. Like, I'm not sure what tradition you grew up in or if you did at all. There's nothing magical or special about the water. We don't, like, fly it in from Jerusalem every time we do this. This is Lake Michigan water. And I feel like I need to say this every time. It needs extra prayer covering right now because we all been in that lake. We know. So anyone getting in here today, it's just normal water. It's the symbolism of the thing that really matters. And maybe you're thinking like, okay, I don't, I don't, maybe, maybe I do this, but I don't, I don't have the clothes. I don't have the things. Our team has actually already thought of you and they've thought of everything. Every hair product, every shirt, every underwear, every short, every possible thing for every possible person in every possible size. What you don't know is there's like a whole Sephora on the other side of this room where they're waiting for you. So there's nothing actually even along those lines. They thought of everything so that nothing would get in the way of you getting baptized today. So I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna pray in a moment and I'm gonna give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus, to say yes to getting baptized today. And if you're ready, you, are, you know exactly what to do. Maybe if you're feeling receptive, I think this is the moment that you're looking for. And even if you feel a little reluctant, would you just open your heart today to giving him that yes? All you have to do is head out to our second floor lobby. When I say amen, I'm gonna invite everyone who wants to get baptized today. And this is part of our tradition. People who showed up here not knowing they're gonna get baptized will be getting baptized, maybe even you today. You just go straight out to our second floor lobby. Our baptism team is waiting for you. They got everything you need. They're gonna pray for you. They're gonna walk with you and they're gonna prepare you to come and get baptized. And if you have friends or people are with you here today, you're like, I want you up there with me, then they can follow you out and just kind of hang in the back of the room until you get baptized because we want you, friends and family, to surround the tank when that person that you love and know is getting baptized. It's a powerful and beautiful moment that you will want to say you were there for. So if you are ready to say yes to Jesus, to say yes to baptism in this moment, this is your moment. I would encourage you to consider what else is it that you need to know that Jesus actually is and has all that you need. So I'm gonna invite you to stand right now and we're all gonna stand together if you can and we're gonna actually pray. And like I said, I want this is a moment for you to kind of do some work and check in with God about your response to him in this moment. And when I pray, if you've never said yes to Jesus today, maybe you've been tracking with us in Alpha and you're like, you know what, I'm ready. I am ready to say yes. Then you can just pray along with me and make these words your words and say yes to Jesus. Because when I say amen, we want everyone, everyone, everyone who wants to be baptized to just walk straight to the back of the room. Just go straight to the back of the room. Don't let anything stop you. There is water. Nothing can stop you from getting baptized today. So as soon as I say amen, we're gonna go nuts in here and you're gonna head to the back of the room into our second floor lobby. So would you join me if you maybe open your hands up right now in this moment and if you trust us enough to close your eyes just to, just to even just check in with yourself right now. Is this something that God's nudging you or prompting you to do to say yes to him? And if you wanna say yes to Jesus, maybe for the first time or the first time in a long time, you can just pray this really simple yet life-changing prayer. You just repeat these words after me if you wanna say yes to him. Say, Jesus... I say yes to you. Thank you for the life you've given me. Forgive me for the sin that has separated me. Help me to become all of who you created me to be. And help me to keep saying yes to you. Jesus, today I choose you as my Lord and my Savior. And Jesus, we thank you for every person who prayed that for the very first time or people who pray that maybe for the first time in a long time. God, we thank you that for the gift of salvation. And even right now, there's something welling up inside of them. That's your freedom. That's your fullness. That's filling them right now, God. Not just spiritually, even physically, they're feeling something happen in their heart. And God, I pray for every person who, who's ready to say yes. They're ready to say yes to you and they want the world to know to get baptized. Would you give them the courage right now to do that? The clarity to say, this is my day, this is my moment. I'm not gonna wait for some perfect moment later. I'm gonna lean into the present moment right now and say yes to you. I pray for every person who maybe is feeling just a little like reluctant right now. Would you move in such a way that they would choose to say yes to you through baptism today? And God, would every person who gets baptized today be a reminder to us that you are still in the business of changing lives, that you are still in the business of making people new, that no matter what is going on around us, we can be changed from within us by the power of your love. And so thank you for the reminder of that today and for every person who's saying yes to you right now in this moment. So in your name we pray, this is your moment coming up, in your name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you.
celebrate the faithfulness of God on display today. Can we celebrate everyone who said yes to Jesus today?
We just celebrate right now in this moment the faithfulness of God on display through every one of these lives. Here's the thing. We're not actually done. There's still more people and more people who are getting baptized right now. So because you may have children that are over in Soul City Kids, uh, they kind of need you to go get them. We're going to continue to keep baptizing people. And even if right now you're like, you know what? I want to do it. Come on down. We want to baptize you before we start our next gathering. We don't want you to miss this moment. So we're going to stay, those of you who can, stay for a little bit to celebrate the rest of the folks who are being baptized. But if you have kids over in Soul City Kids, we would encourage you in just a second to go grab them. I want to let you know about our prayer hall, which is right down here in their second floor lobby. Our prayer team would love to meet with you. They would love to pray with you. And then don't miss next weekend as we celebrate our 14th anniversary as a church. People will say one day, were you there? And you will want to say, I was there. So next Sunday is our 14th anniversary, so we'd love to see you there for that. If you want to stay and can, awesome. If you need to go get kids, go get them. But let's just celebrate again every yes to Jesus today. Thank you, Soul City. Love you.
chorus again one more time. Cause all you've ever been, cause all you ever been, all you ever will be, all you ever are, is faithful, faithful, at least a million times. I've seen it with my own. Celebrate one last time. Celebrate the faithfulness of God. I'm going to celebrate new life this morning. Amen. 
lifted up around this room. Who will
How fun is this? Today at Soul City Church, we got to baptize 44 people today right here, this church. How fun is that? 